Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's fourth and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's final video. Day 10 is going to take us to the 15th of February and we'll be able to extend out beyond that instead of GFS and ECM ensembles because we're around a couple of weeks. And we'll have a look at the CFS BT at the end of the video for the next four weeks, which gets us into the beginning of March. I should get on with that view in a moment. Just say that the first video say was our 6 a.m. upload. We've released the weekend forecast and the EC 42 days such six weeks look at as well. So please check out those videos if you'd like to do that. Please like, share, subscribe on the vids. And thank you so much, everyone, uh, for doing that. Right, so we're going to start off with the uh, Central Intention. So we're team for February is standing at 8.0. That is uh, 3.7 degrees above average. That is provisional to yesterday to the 4th of February. They come down a little bit yesterday, but it's still significantly above average. I thought we'd have a quick look at the CT for February through the, uh, through the years. So uh, this is the CT page at UK back going back to 1659. It's the longest and oldest uh, most reliable temperature record anywhere on Earth. Of course, the further back you go into 17 and 1600, it's just like a reflection snapshot of the conditions uh, back then. But it still gives you a heads up, you know, for what things were like. For example, in 1666, we see that July came out the CT of 18.0, which is very hot, especially for that era. Um, and we know that was a hot summer because uh, it ended up with the Great Fire of London. And that was partly caused by the... Um, you know, by the, the prolonged hot, dry weather. So it is a reflection, and it is uh, it does give you an indication of what things like. Anyway, let's come down to the current year. So we can come down to 2022. We've got January's number placed uh, already at, f at 4.6. February's number will be placed just here. So the last time we had a cold February wasn't all that long ago, actually. It was back in 2018 at the beach from the east, and that gave us a February CT of, uh, of 2.9. It's pretty cold, actually. Um, since then, uh, February's been generally mild. I had two very mild Februarys in 2019 and 2020. They had, like, early summer-type uh, temperatures at times. Um, a little bit cooler for 2021. Um, but that didn't. That was a funny month, because that, like, had been cold this week. I'd be a whole winter of 2020, 2021 in week two. But then the second half of that became uh, really, really mild. We had another cold February in 2013 at 3.2. Uh, and then we had a cold February in 2010 at 2.8. The last time I had a February that was under 2 degrees was a really long time ago, back in 1991. I'm sure a lot of you remember the freeze-up of, uh, of um, February 91. Uh, so I had a century in temperature of 1.5. So, so we've not been as cold as that since. Another cold February in 1996. On the minor side, though, the uh, warmest Februarys on record have been recorded in recent uh, sort of years as well. So we've got 1998 at 7.3. And uh, we also have 1990 at 7.3. They were really, really exceptional. Of course, we had 86, 1986, which was our, which was our last sub-zero CT uh, February. That came out central in temperature of minus 1.1. That's extraordinarily cold from beginning to end, really. Not all that much snow, funnily enough. I do remember snow being on the ground throughout the whole month, but not a huge amount, to be honest. The main thing with that month was just how extremely cold it was, you know, from beginning to end. We just, just I think every single night virtually was frosty um, back then. Uh, we also have 1969, which was a cold February. That came out the CT of uh, 1.0. Of course, we're going back now into the colder era. But Daddy of Cold Winters um, had a sub zero CT uh, February. That came out at minus 0 0.7. So not as cold as the January before. However, we had two back-to-back -back months uh, that were both sub-zero CT-wise. And so that is, again, why uh, it was the daddy of cold winds. And the coldest February on record is, not, is uh, 1947, I think, which has a CT of minus 1.9. Extremely cold and snowy month. Uh, that one, and I think that is just about the coldest on record. There are some in the 1800s uh, that get uh, close to that. 1895 was another very cold one with minus 1.8. Uh, that's a very severe February indeed. We've got 1855 at minus 1.7. Um, so yeah, you know, there's been quite a few, quite a few, um, over the years that have been very, very cold, but we've not had one lately. We've got 1869, which is very mild February again, very warm February 
at 7.5. That was part of one of the warmest winters on record. Um, let's go further back. There is a really warm February in the 1700s, I think, but I'm struggling to find it. Ah, there it is, 1779. That is actually the warmest on record. A little bit warmer than 1990 and... Um, uh, 1998, that's at 7.9 in the 8 degrees, that's the warmest within the entire CT record, I believe. So, um, yeah, that brings you up to date with, uh, you know, how February stacks up. I think this February is obviously going to be more of a 1990, and, um, uh, you know, it's going to be more of that kind of month, uh, rather than a 1998, it'll be more in line with that than like a 19. 47, I think. It's going to be a pretty mild month, I think, this February. But we'll see where we where we come out in the end. Right, so I thought you find that interesting. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. So let's go with so the uh, red line. It's a 30-year upper air temperature average for Belfast. We're starting off uh, about an average at the moment. You're going to see the temperature going a bit colder, actually, over the next couple of days. So it's going to get very mild through the early part of next week before we have another little cold snap through the uh, second half of next week. And then just hovering very, very close to average. But there is quite a bit of up and down going on there. Um, quite a bit of zonality. It does look more unsettled, though. Now, this is for Belfast. We're going to be exposed to the Atlantic. But I think we are heading for a more unsettled phase. It does look pretty wet, to be honest. Uh, especially as we go from, like, the middle of the month onwards into the second half of the month. Temperature anomalies from the 5th to the 13th of February are going to be milder than average. And precipitation anomalies from the 5th to the 13th of February are going to be wetter than average in the north and northwest, drier than average in the south and southeast. The latest wind flow map from EarthNorthSchool.net shows that we're bringing in winds from a uh, milder westerly direction in the south today. So the wind is coming from around here. The air is coming from around here, I should say. But further north, as we begin to draw the air out of uh, green, there will actually be some snow around across Scotland later on today, particularly overnight into tomorrow. So more about that in uh, in the 6 a.m. forecast and also in the uh, 10, in the um, weekend forecast. What am I talking about? This is the 10th 14 day. I'm getting mixed up. Right, let's uh, crack on with some chart data. Then, this is how the UK Met Euro is looking for midnight on Tuesday. We're back into very mild air by then. High pressures over Biscay in France. Low pressure around Iceland and Greenham. And up comes that uh, south westerly wind. That carries on into Wednesday. We're going to a little bit cooler with winds turning into the northwest. As we go through to Thursday, so have a bit of a northwesterly in the second half of the week. That could bring some wintry showers back into Scotland to maybe some overnight frost as the area of high pressure begins to build in from off the Atlantic. This is how Icon is looking again. High pressure is ridging through France on Tuesday. Low pressure around Greenland and Iceland. And we draw in that very mild, if not quite warm, southwesterly wind. A cold front pushes south eastwards Wednesday to Thursday. Introduces some colder air from the uh, northwest and shells could well turn wintry in the north. As the high pressure builds in, we can expect some quite sharp overnight frost at the end of the week and into the weekend. As so long as we get to midday on Saturday under the area of high pressure. And uh, again, with that, you expect a lot of dry weather, but could be some quite hard overnight frost. This is how the GFS uh, midnight run is looking. Much of a match this for Tuesday with high pressure over France, low pressure around Iceland, and we bring up that very mild southwesterly wind. Through the second half week, winds will turn into the northwest. It will start to become a little bit cooler when the high pressure ridges in from off the Atlantic. Keeping us, you know, dry to the end of week, but quite chilly. Low pressure then uh, sweeping in next weekend. It's a bit different to like the. Um, uh, the UK Met and Icon, low pressure sweeps in next weekend and turns us wet and windy, uh, heralding, you know, proper unsettled weekend next weekend. And then beyond that, more low pressure up to day 10 with this uh, feature coming in off the Atlantic, bringing further wet and windy weather. In the more extended range, the GFS Midnight Run builds up high pressure to the south, turns us drier but also milder. We're back into relatively flat westerlies. Uh, by the end of the GFS Midnight Run, which gets the 21st of February, back into milder, wetter and windier weather then. The 6Z, uh, GFS looks like that. Again, high pressure over France, low pressure around Iceland and Greenland on Tuesday. Very mild. A little bit of a cooler interlude at the end of the week. Brief cold snap then into wet, windy weather uh, next weekend. Stays flat and uh, westerly right way through to the end of the GFS 6Z with more low pressure diving in. From off the Atlantic. Definitely more mobility with the GFS output today. Um, you know, for, for the rest of February. 
Uh, heading on to the G, yeah. If you enjoyed the video, by the way, please do smash the like button. Make sure you sub to the channel. Thank you so much for doing that. And drop a comment. Let's know what you think about this and all of our videos. Thank you so much. Right, GM with high pressure over France, low pressure around Iceland. And again, we're joining up very mild southwest winds on Tuesday. A little bit cooler into the second half of the week. But possibly a bit colder with winds properly going northerly for a brief period Thursday to Friday. Um, doesn't last all that long. We're back into wetter and windier weather again through uh, next weekend and up to like day 10, looking quite unsettled with relatively deep low pressure in off the Atlantic. And then the ECM is looking like this with high pressure over France, low pressure on Iceland and Greenland. And we're bringing in those very mild southwest winds early next week. But a little bit of a cooler interlude through the second half of the week, a little bit cooler then. Uh, and then high pressure is backing over the country within probably quite chilly air. So there could be some overnight frost next weekend before it starts to turn wetter and windier again by day 10. Uh, this is a precipitation forecast based on the ECM run from Tobetio.com. So rain will be easing southwards through the course of today and introducing cold air into north. So showers will turn to snow across the north half of the country. Significant snow into the quite low levels uh, across Scotland tonight and tomorrow. Uh, there we go, milder, so um, mainly light rain uh, before a little bit of a cooler interlude towards the end of the week, still relatively dry, and then up to day 10, looking, you know, quite dry until we get towards day 10 itself, and then we begin to get wet and windy weather coming back in from off the Atlantic Ocean. This is the option on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10, gets to the 15th of February, 51 out of 51 members of the ECM ensembles, all of them with low pressure away to the northwest, high pressure to the south, southeast, and uh, in come those mild or very mild west or southwesterly winds. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. It gets us to the 20th of February. 26 members of the ECM ensembles have high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north, winds in. From a mild westerly direction. 13 with high pressure ridging into the UK from Scandinavia. Mainly dry but it could be a little bit colder with that. Winds perhaps coming in off the continent. The sun by uh, second half of February is getting stronger by the day. So by day probably relatively pleasant. You know uh, uh, and, and not too bad. But by night there could be overnight frost. And then 12 here has low pressure to the north. High pressure to the south and winds remain uh, Wesley, that's unsettled and uh, pretty flat. Uh, Seven three two. Finally, so means the five hundred mm of heights break down to week periods. The first week period takes from the February to the eleventh of February, the coming week with high pressure to our south and west, low pressure to our north northeast winds in from the westerly direction, mainly dry in the south, more unsettled in the north, and will be mild. More unsettled for week two, throughout to the 18th of February, low pressure breaks through from off the Atlantic. It's still mild, it's still a mild wind direction, but it is more settled, more unsettled with low pressure being spells of rain. Week three is the 19th to 25th of February, still with lots of low pressure around Greenland, Iceland, still bringing in winds from off the Atlantic. And then week four is also westerly. It's the 26th February to 4th of March. Low pressure again to the north. High pressure to the south. Winds in from a westerly direction still. Sonality goes on. Will the pattern never change? I wonder. Right, if you enjoyed the video, please do smash the like button. Make sure you sub to the channel. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. And drop a comment. Let us know. About this and all of our videos. Thank you so much. Don't forget to tell your friends and family to subscribe as well. If everybody who subscribes means a friend, we'll get to our next target, which is 14,000 subscribers so much more quickly. Right, thank you so much, everybody. That's it for today's videos. Uh, they're just coming up tomorrow, so we will have a 6 a.m. upload. We are going to have a uh, Gazo with Sunny Roundup as well. That's once a month, once a month for the time being, first Sunday of the month. And uh, if that wasn't enough, we also uh, probably going to have Ensembles Watch, but not live. I won't be live streaming tomorrow. Uh, I'll just be doing like a regular upload for Ensembles Watch, I think, tomorrow evening. You enjoy the rest of your Saturday. And for today's videos, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.